Hello everyone, I am Zurek Lord Sunno, and welcome to Century of Economy 2020. This year marks the five year anniversary of the game, and as such I have put a few special things out in the map to make this year memorable. Firstly is the addition of the Lagoon Island. Ships can only dock at the docks that extend from the island. The island will produce one of the six resources, but it also features an interior island. On this island are sparkly silver coins, as well as some 100 value coins and a couple UTs that either give gold bonuses or are helpful. In order to get to the interior island, a faction will need either a ship that can submerge or fly over the island, or to launch a ship at the interior dock. Secondly, making its first ever campaign game debut is the Bone Temple Island. The Bone Temple is a desolate place, with a temple made entirely of bones dominating the landscape. If a ship is docked at this island, it may eliminate the crew. If they do, they may choose one enemy ship, and decide what actions that ship can be given on its turn, or decide that it gets no actions at all. Returning once again is Voya Nui. While the island will not sink this time, probably, a volcano on it has become active. At the beginning of a resource round, if all players roll d6 and get a 5 or 6, the volcano will erupt. Voyanui will also produce up to two of the six resources, except for food, making the island a valuable target. However, dotted around the island are eight stacks of ten coins. These coins have some valuable silver among them, but most of the coins there are unique treasures. Speaking of unique treasures, all islands begin the game with gold on them this year, but like on Voyanui, they are mostly or completely unique treasures. Not only is every UT we own in the mix, but every UT from our custom sets has been included. That many powerful relics and objects floating around will certainly make the game interesting. The Spanish start things off, with a 40-point fleet comprised of El Alquimista, plus a tribal chieftain and a helmsman, the Spanish native canoes, La Anunciada, plus an explorer, and La Monarca, with an explorer. The cursed are next, and begin with the Pestilence, plus tribal chieftain, towing the Death's Anchor flotilla, the cursed native canoes, and the Celestin, with linked master scribe. The Americans are next, starting with the Providence, with an explorer, Carolina, with an explorer, the Harlequin, with an explorer, and the Destiny. Next are the French, starting with Liblu, with an explorer, the Cour de Lyon, with explorer, Enfant Terrible, with explorer, Lipique, with explorer, and Le Mercure, with explorer and oarsman. Next are the Pirates, starting with the Princess, Longshanks, Bloody Jewel plus Mistress Ching, The Dragon, Bonnie Liz, and Banshee's Cry with Explorer. Lastly are the English, starting with HMS Lady Provost and a Helmsman, and HMS Endeavor and Carbon Charlie. Now, on to the action! A wide shot shows the Western Ocean, with the Spanish and English featured. The French, Pirates, and Cursed can be seen in the background. A shot of the Eastern Ocean. The Cursed Home Island is situated nicely, with resource islands all around. The Pirates are to the north, as well as the French. The Spanish get things going, with the Monarca making for a gold island, while the Alchemista and Anunciada make for the Hidden Cove Island, where the canoes are. The Cursed split up, with the Celestin sailing west, and almost making land at the Archway Island. The Pestilence takes the Death's Anchor south and east to meet up with the canoes. The Americans split their fleet as well. The Providence makes land, finding a message in a bottle that's sent her to Kanohi Island. The Harlequin makes land as well, finding spices at Sharktooth Island. The Carolina and Destiny both sail north. The Leblu makes land at Split Island, finding food. The Enfant Terrible sails east, while the Peak sails north toward the northern portal. Le Mercure found lumber on Pride Rock, but was whisked away to a whirlpool by the Whirlpool UT. The Peak has almost made it to the Northern Portal, while the Mercure emerges from a whirlpool. Like some of the other fleets, the pirates split up. The Banshee's Cry has made it to a gold island, loading a coin and eagerly looking for a chest, but to no avail. The Dragon and Princess sail south to the Pyramid Island. The Longshanks and Bloody Jewels sail north for Tutorial Island. The Bonnie Liz breaks off, sailing out on her own. A wider shot of the Northern Ocean shows the activity of the French and the pirates. A Lady Provost makes it to the Lagoon Island on her first turn. Using her Explorer, she loads the coins available and finds medicine, taking a helping of the resource as well. 
Speaking of resources, the first rolls were made. Factions eagerly held their breath, waiting to see if what they had found would be valuable. A five came out for value, making food and finished goods the most valuable resources. More interesting, however, was the duration of twelve, the maximum possible duration. With ample available time to them, factions began plotting and planning, thinking of how best to optimize their fleets. La Monarca explored her island, finding the Eye of Insanity in John's Hook. She also looked for a buried chest, but could find none. The canoes were given an explore action, with one finding the monkey's paw, and also revealing blood money. The Spanish were more excited, however, with the discovery of finished goods, which were worth five gold apiece. The canoes all load a resource, while the alchemista makes land and loads some for herself. The Anunciada is a hair's breadth away from making land, and the monarcha has used her ability to reposition and is now heading for the finished goods island. The cursed canoes find lumber, and a plague. The Celestin finds food at Archway Island, pleasing the cursed greatly as it is the most valuable resource currently. The Providence has explored a couple islands and has found some interesting UTs. The English royal decree could be useful down the line, as well as Triton's defense. Message in a bottle sent her to Kanohi Island, where the Providence found the Baraki Talisman, a UT that would allow the Americans to summon one of the fearsome Baraki to their fleet. Despite their fortune with UTs, the Providence has also found metals, currently the least valuable resource. The Carolina found more dew on the Gold Island. More dew will prevent any treasure from being loaded from the island until he is eliminated. More dew can be eliminated by either a successful broadsides attack, or by a successful hit from all cannons a ship has available. A wide shot of American waters. They have been unlucky so far, finding low-value resources and little to no regular gold. The French are doing very well by comparison. The Lee Blue is making trips to and from Split Island regularly, and the French are getting rich quick from the food that the island produces. The Enfant Terrible has also made it to a gold island north of Kanohi. It is possible this will become an island of contention between the French and the Americans. The Coeur has made land at the shipwreck pathway, finding finished goods. The French now have the two most valuable resources within easy sailing distance. The Lee Blue and Mercure overlook the healthy pile of gold now on the French home island. The Bonnie Liz makes land at the shipwreck pathway, but does not have an explorer to explore the island for the pirates. Elsewhere, the rest of the pirate fleet has made land at their respective islands. The Banshee's Cry has tried and failed again to find a buried chest. The Lady Provost returns home, unloading her hall of medicine. The English cash it in right away, giving them some gold to work with. Not waiting, they make the first launch of the game, the Hyena with a helmsman and explorer. The Spanish begin the trek home, their canoes laden. The Alquimista and Monarca are also carrying a full cargo. The cursed canoes begin to make their way home. The Celestin is less than a move action away from the home island. The Destiny explores her island, finding a homemade flag as well as more metals. The Lynx is docked at the far side of the Lagoon Island. An overhead shot shows French waters. Lee Mercure has returned to Pride Rock for lumber, and the Lee Blue has returned to Split Island for food. The Enfant Terrible has made land at the Gold Island and found Enemy of the State and Relics. The French immediately recall the quest involving the Relics UT. The French end their turn by launching three new ships. The Triton with Explorer, La Belle Etoile with an Explorer, and La Province with Explorer. The Longshanks finds the Heart of the Sea UT, which would give the Longshanks plus L to her base move from Trade Currents as opposed to plus S. The Bloody Jewel has unloaded her cargo, thanks to Mistress Ching. The Banshee's Cry has given up on finding hidden chests. For now. Like the French, the pirates end their turn by launching two ships, the White Rose, and the Song, with Jenny Gallows and a helmsman. The hyena sails east, toward Voyanui. She makes a pit stop at one of the gold islands, just outside the bay, finding wet gunpowder and two buried chests. The Lady Provost returns to the Lagoon Island, while Carbon Charlie gives the Endeavor an additional cannon. The Spanish fleet is almost home, with a small fortune stashed in their cargo holds. The Celestin docks home her coins and resources, along with the first few canoes. The Pestilence has left the Death Sanker off the shore of the Lumber Island. The Americans are in a pickle. Nothing but low-value resources all around, and no real gold to speak of. The Enfant Terrible explores the Bone Temple Island, finding even more metals, as well as the trees, UT. 
The various players find it amusing that trees would be in an island completely devoid of anything green. The French flock to their various islands in a mad dash for gold. The Banshee's cry returns to the gold island to look for more chests, while the dragon, Longshanks, and Princess converge on the home island. The White Rose and Song make sail for Pyramid Island. The hyena returns home, unloading the chests she found. The English use the gold from those chests to buy some crew that go face down on the home island, as well as construct Ramsgate on top of the lagoon island. To make matters worse for the Americans, an iceberg slams into their home island, creating what is sure to be a logistical nightmare. Some of the Spanish canoes make it home, in addition to all of their other ships. With the gold they have, they launch two ships. The San Cristobal, with fire and steel Victor de Alva, a helmsman, Almirante Davante del Nero from Barbary Coast, a cannoneer, and oarsman. The Santa Isabel, with Savage Shore's Master Bianco. The Cursed also end with a launch, putting the Strix with Barst and Smaug the Sea Dragon into the water at their home island. The Americans bring home a few coins, not enough to launch anything. Spending a good chunk of their gold, the French launch as well. The Ferron, with linked Baron Matthias Danglars. Debut de l'Aventure, with Antony Roux. The Chevalier Fair. La Bonne Chance, with Monsieur Morel. And Lee Favori, with an explorer. The pirates do not launch, instead pooling their gold and waiting for a more opportune moment. The Banshee's cry has had little luck finding buried chests. The White Rose and Song have made land at the Pyramid Island, loading the food that can be found there. The Hyena becomes the first ship to enter Voy Nui Bay. The English are hoping that the ship will find good things at the island. The Lady Provost sets sail for the far side of the Lagoon Island, her sights set on the western portal and the gold island that lays beyond the lagoon. The Spanish get things started, with Victor de Alva and the San Cristobal engaging in the first combat of the game. With her incredible speed, the Cristobal catches up to the Lady Provost, and with the help of an extra action, derelicts the ship. The Spanish have transferred the Eye of Insanity UT to the Annunciada, who will use it to copy the Micron-like ability of Barst. The Spanish end their turn by putting the San Pedro into the water. Smaug flies across the ocean and splashes down in front of the Bone Temple concerning the French sailors aboard the Entrant Terrible. The cursed end their turn by putting Squallow into the water, with the intent for him to take the plague UT from the canoe and hold on to it for later use. The Bonnie Liz and Longshank sail to assist the Banshee's cry in finding chests at the Gold Island. The rest of the pirate fleet is occupied with gathering food. The Endeavor loads the face-down crew from the home island, revealing Admiral Morgan and James Norrington, plus a helmsman. The Endeavor moves off slightly from her berth, aware of the speed of the Cristobal. Victor sends the Cristobal on a course to meet up with the rest of the fleet at Hidden Cove Island. The Spanish are guessing that the English will try to go after their gold runners with the Endeavor. The Americans concentrate their efforts on the Spices Island, with almost all ships docking at and loading spices. The French continue to bring in large quantities of high-value resources. Food and finished goods are quickly converted into gold, giving the French a massive stockpile early in the game. The pirates have quickly and quietly shot past the 100 gold mark, with a silver-backed coin on their home island to represent their fortune. Succeeding with Morgan's extra action, the Endeavor shoots across the ocean, crossing the bow of the San Cristobal and dismasting the ship in one fell swoop. Luckily, the Cristobal had an oarsman on board, and was able to get home with De Alva's extra action. The canoes sacrificed themselves, creating a screen around the Endeavor so that the rest of the Spanish fleet can either flee or hide in the fog. The cursed end their turn by putting the cyclone and sea monkey with a helmsman into the water at their home island. The Banshee's cry finally found some buried chests, and immediately brought them home. The Bonilas and Longshanks keep looking. The Endeavor makes short work of the canoes, sinking all of them in a single shoot action. The Hyena returns to Voyanui after coming back early the last time. Now that the Spanish have attacked and the Lady Provost is out of commission, the Hyena is the last English gold runner left. The Cristobal begins repairing quickly with De Alva's help. At the end of their turn, the Spanish launch El Corazado, with Louis Zuan from Mysterious Islands, Nemesio Diaz, Joaquin Vega, Duke Marcos Vaccaro, Captain Alrico Castro, and a helmsman. The Sea Monkey and Cyclone load food from the Archway Island. The Celestin is sailing south and west, toward Flattop Island. Squallow has taken the Plague UT and is swimming lazily northward. 
Smaug repositions and sets his sights on French runners going to and from the split island. The Americans have a handful of coins on their home island, but have still not launched anything. So far, they are the only faction to still be operating with their starting fleet. In contrast, the French are off to a running start, with gold piling up on their home island, and ships sailing to and fro. The pirates are gathering resources and gold quickly. At the end of their turn, they purchase a town and port token upgrade. The Endeavor breaks off her attempt to wreck the Spanish gold fleet. She instead sails to reclaim the Lady Provost. The hyena has entered Voyanui Bay and is looking to make land at the Grey Beach that is the only docking point on the whole island. The Spanish mobilize, with the Corzado sailing north to meet the Endeavor, while the rest of the fleet sails to get resources and quickly. The Celestin finds a spyglass and some lumber on Flat Top Island. After saving some gold for a turn, the cursed spend it to put the Guishan into the water with linked headhunter, Keith Atkinson, and a helmsman. The Providence sails south, braving the edge of the ocean on her way to the far side of the Lagoon Island. The rest of the American fleet is grabbing spices at Sharktooth Island. The Harley Quinn has been summoned to deal with Mordu. With her accurate and single cannon, she should be able to get rid of the annoying bear easily enough. The French are concerned with the continued presence of Smaug, and launch two gunships, just in case. The Premier Republique, with Capitaine Francois Moreau, Amiral Stephen Dupuy, Jacques, Duc de Valois, a helmsman and oarsman. The Argonaut, with Jordan Dumas from Barbie Coast, a helmsman, cannoneer, and oarsman. The pirates also launch at the end of their turn, putting the Hades Flame, Amity, and Cassandra with a helmsman into the water at their home island. The Endeavor turns about, using another extra action to get the jump on the Spanish runners. However, she was only able to eliminate one mast from the Santa Isabel. The hyena makes land at Voyanui. She rolls to explore the number four stack of coins, finding a veritable treasure trove of UTs. Ammunition, Witch's Brew, Curse of Davy Jones, Neptune's Trident, Nui Codex, and Nightmare's Knot, along with a shiny silver coin. The Nui Codex would allow the hyena to move through islands when given a move action, but it was the Nightmare's Knot that drew the most attention, as it could be used to cancel any one ability from afar until the beginning of that player's next turn. In open conflict with the Spanish, this is a great discovery for the English. The Spanish retaliate quickly. The Cristobal uses her tremendous speed to zip out and catch the Endeavor broadsides, eliminating two masts. The Alquimista then rammed and boarded the Endeavor, and failed up both, losing her tribal chieftain. This did not bother the Spanish as they could be bought back later, since chieftains and canoes are considered generic. The San Pedro also attempted to ram, but did no damage, and declined to board. Thanks to the trade currents that the Celestin has been dropping, along with the fleet action that Barks gives them, the Cursed are beginning to bring in a steady amount of food. The Harley Quinn manages to eliminate more dew. This is cause for celebration among the Americans, as well as the steady buildup of gold. The French are feeling much better, with their two new gunships sailing among the gold runners to protect them from Smaug. The Endeavor cripples the Cristobal, then heads for home, seeing the Acorazado oncoming. The Hyena was given an action to explore Voyanui again, and found a terrible combination of UTs. Lodite's Revenge, Heart of Davy Jones, Cursed Conch, Sexton, and French Royal Decree were all tolerable or benign. However, the Maelstrom Sigil, Adrift, and Loa's Wrath were not. Loa's Wrath snares any ship that comes within S of the Island it is found on, and it snared the Hyena, preventing her from being given actions on her next turn. Adrift made all islands unexplored and reset all resources. Maelstrom Sigil was perhaps the worst, however. It eliminated all of the ship's crew, made her unable to dock, would eliminate a mast from the ship every turn, and when no more masts remained, it would eliminate the hyena. As the English reel from this terrible news, the hyena made the resource roll for one half of Oyanui, finding medicine, as well as a buried treasure.
The Scent to Isabel re-explores the Hidden Cove Island, finding metals, the least valuable resource. Fortunately, the Scent to Isabel had already loaded a full cargo of finished goods the term before. The Guishan re-explores for the Cursed, finding medicine, quite a comedown from the food they had been getting. Smaug is moved to within striking distance of a French gold runner and is given a second action to let loose with his cannons. He manages to go two for four to eliminate one mast from the Frenchman. Back at home, the cursed spawn in a creature not seen since the 2016 game. Morgrel has finally returned. The Providence explores the far gold island for the Americans, scooping up the two coins that were found there. The rest of the American fleet carries on, with the Carolina and Destiny docking home some spices, and the Harlequin docking to load the coin from Mordu's Island. The Mercure, Triton, and Belitol all sail west toward the Bone Temple Island. The Argonaut succeeded with her built-in SAT, and sailed up to Smaug and went 4 for 4 to eliminate two of his segments. The Premier Republic also got her extra action, and sailed in to finish the Mighty Beast, the first casualty of the game. At the end of their turn, the French built St. Pierre on the Gold Island, a stone's throw away from Kanohi Island. Ever so slowly, the French are creeping into American waters. The Dragon and White Rose make land at the Pyramid Island. The Dragon is carrying a town and port upgrade. The Spanish send the Cristobal home to repair, where at the end of their turn, they launch El Picador with an explorer, with the sole purpose of taking on the Ivan Sandy UT to get a free action every turn. The cursed canoes find medals in the south on Triangle Island, which frustrates them. Of all the factions, the Americans don't mind the resources resetting, since it means they have a chance to find something other than metals. With that in mind, the fleet scatters to the wind, racing to islands previously visited. The French re-explore two islands, finding food and finished goods. This makes the French happy, as it only slightly modifies their sailing routes. The Lieb Loop explores Split Island, finding metals. The French consider this unfortunate. The Favori docks at the Bone Temple Island, and uses her explorer to build a town on it. The Belly Toll is close behind, with a port upgrade. The pirates give the dragon an action to create a town on Pyramid Island. The Cassandra and Bloody Jewel find finished goods on a re-explorer of Tutorial Island. The pirates give the dragon a second action, via Jean Lafitte on the Blackheart, to upgrade the town to a trading port on Pyramid Island. At the end of their turn, they launch the Destiny's Bounty with the Helmsman and Colonizer. The hyena is free from the grasp of the Loa's wrath, but is doomed. With one mass remaining, the hyena will not make it back to English waters. The hyena lists to one side as her doom approaches. Fully repaired and the last English ship that can move, the Endeavor sails out to try and save the Lady Provost. Ella Corazada wastes Ramsgate, taking the fort down to just its extended cannon. At the end of their turn, the Spanish launch the Matthias Vospero, with the captain, helmsman, cannoneer, Firepot Specialist and Oarsman, as well as the Squid Intermediaro. The Cyclone ventures north, toward the portal and a handful of unexplored islands. The Guishan has been running steady back and forth between the Archway Island and the Cursed Helm Island. The trade currents placed by the Celestin have made this possible. The Americans explore Shark Tooth Island again and find spices. Again. The Favori gets out of the way as the Belly Toll upgrades the town to a trading port on the Bone Temple Island. At the end of their turn, the French purchase two more town and one more trading port upgrade. Presumably, these will be placed on Pride Rock. The French also launched the Rocher Noir with the captain, helmsman, and musketeer at their home island. The Terror with Pippin Bernadotte, Thane Heartless, and a helmsman are put into the water at St. Pierre. The pirates gather gold as normal, surpassing the 200 gold mark, and use their trading port to launch the Baoshuan, with linked Zheng He, Katsurachan, Warlord Cavendish, Cheng Pao, and a Helmsman. The hyena's last mast is eliminated, triggering the final effect of the sigil, removing her from the game. With her went a bevy of UTs. The Endeavor got her extra action and used careful maneuvering to get the jump in the Okorizado, striking from long distance to avoid Nemesio Diaz. The Endeavor went five for five, taking the Acorzado down to one mass standing. And that wraps up this report. The English are in a bad way, and could face elimination. All other factions are doing well, and the game has only just begun. If you want to see what happens next, make sure you're subscribed. If you liked what you saw, hit that like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all 
next time.